a two. What? A tissue box cover shaped like a shipping container and decorated for the Gulf Coast Intermodal Company, a fictitious shipping company on my model railroad layout. How can that be? Bob Johnson here with BKW Railroad coming at you with another video. Sometimes I really don't know about me and the projects I select, but this time I decided that I would make this shipping container tissue box cover and decorate it for my freelance model railroad. I thought it would be kind of interesting from a branding perspective. And at the end of this video, I'll give you a link to another video on branding, as well as a playlist about decaling, which played a big part in this project. So it takes a little something to go from this to this. Stay tuned and I'll show you how I did it. Well, here's the start of the project. The original container was labeled with a fanciful Maersk scheme. Uh, it doesn't really fit a standard tissue box. You gotta get the small vertical style ones. It's not completely accurate dimensionally compared to a 20 foot container, but it's close. It's about 1 19th scale. Uh, pretty flimsy, but I'll put a link to it in the description below on Amazon if you wanna get one. Here I'm preparing to paint white onto the already primed container using my outdoor turntable, a garbage can. You always want to paint with the wind at your back outside, so it's nice to be able to rotate the object you're painting. And here I am applying white to the areas of the container that I'm going to have to mask off for decaling because, of course, Unless you have special printing capability, you can't print white. So I just have clear, so the white shows through. So I have to paint white to put the decal on top of. This is Snow White Montana Black spray paint I'm using for the white here. Here are the round masks that I created for the logos for GCI that apply to the container. And here they are on the container on the white painted areas ready to be painted with uh, the fog Montana black gray color for the company. Here's the door end of the car with the areas matched off as well. So here's my secret for masking. When you mask an area on whatever you're going to paint a model, or in this case, a tissue box cover, you're going to, uh, once you apply the mask and you have made sure that that's well adhered to the surface, Take your airbrush, or I guess you could do it with a paintbrush as well, but you need to put a light coat of your base color, whatever it is underneath the mask, that you want to stay clean. In my case, white. I sprayed white around the edge of the mask. That way, if any paint is going to leak through, it's going to be your base color. So that now when I go back and paint on my fog gray color, None of that's going to leak through because the mask has essentially been sealed by a very light coat of the base color. So that's my tip for using a paint mask. And here I am putting a second coat of the fog gray on top of the mask container. Unfortunately, my original video of putting on coat number one didn't come out because I forgot to turn on the camera. Well, there's something magical about taking off a mask. So let's see, see how we've done. We've got our fog gray Montana black spray paint on here. And let's see how we did masking off this circular area. Just gonna very carefully try to pick the edge of this mask off without getting into the white paint. Sorry, my hand's getting in the way there. Wish I had a pair of tweezers to grab that, but I don't. A little bit 
chip there. I don't know what that is exactly. Ah, it came right off. Perfect. Alright, that looks pretty good. Well, as you can see, I did my masking with the frog cake delicate surface. This is a picture of the decal sheet that I created by scaling up my 187th scale decals to 119th scale. I also had to make a lot of the data conspicuity striping and things like that. Things that in HO scale, I rely on micro scale sheets. I had to create those from scratch. Unfortunately, the time lapse that I created of me applying these decals uh, did not come out for did not come out at all. Or I lost it. I'm not sure what exactly happened, but I've done a search for it and I can't find it. So, don't take your film production duties uh, lightly. What follows is a little spin on the turntable of the completed project. I did have to touch up around that GCI logo because the white area, a white circle I created, was a little bit too big. There are eight decals on the side, I believe, of the container. And there are 17 on the door end here. Um, I opted to just coat this at the end with a coat of uh, matte, var matte lacquer, rather, to uh, protect it. Decided not to weather it because it was, I thought a clean appearance would look better around the house and on my. Uh, on my desk where I plan to keep this. The only thing left to do is to apply a couple of feet because as you can see, the bottom is kind of convex so it doesn't sit flat on a surface. Well, there you have it. That's my video about doing this tissue box project, which was kind of a lark. The box was fed to me by the Amazon shopping algorithm and obviously it hit a chord because I really wanted to have a branding item and repaint that box to look like the Gulf Coast intermodal containers that I've been painting over the years. So a really fun project. Here are the links to the other branding videos that I have and for your freelance model railroad and also uh, a link to a playlist on some decaling because decaling paid a large part in this project. Thank you very much for watching. If you like this kind of content and kind of crazy stuff, but it's about freelance model railroading, then I hope you'll subscribe. Until next time, this is Bob Johnson with PK&W Railroad signing off. Happy modeling.